Thrill Seekers, and that was a bit of the song Cinnamon Girl by Neil Young, originally by Neil Young, but this is my version of it. And I realized after I put it up yesterday that I shouldn't have had a guitar solo playing all the way through it. So the version you'll see at the end of this video doesn't have the annoying guitar solo playing all the way through it. So it's an improvement. Okay, uh, those of you who are worried about my uh, gig in Manchester, someone has come through. So I will be appearing on Saturday, August 19th at a place called Yoga on the Edge, and it is not actually in the city of Manchester, England, but it is on the outskirts, on the edge of Manchester, hence the name. And there is a link in my events page, uh, which you'll see on the screen below, uh, sorry, hardcorezen.info slash events. That's hardcorezen.info slash events. You can link to Yoga on the Edge's page, and if my event isn't already listed, which it just I just decided, so it's probably not listed, but you can ask them for information on it, you can contact them directly. So that's that, and I have also unfortunately had to cancel my appearance at the Buddhist summer camp in Italy due to some stuff going on here in the United States, which is gonna keep me here for a little longer. So I hope that doesn't disappoint uh, any of you who were going to that event. There are, I think, four other teachers at the event, so I don't think I will be uh, that seriously missed uh, so I would encourage you to still go if you were planning to go anyway I think it should still be a good event even without me all right so I wanted to start off today's video by telling you a story and here's the story back when I was working for Tsuburaya Productions in Japan at the company that makes Ultraman world's biggest and best superhero character I was often having trouble uh, with stuff in the office and one of the people I would talk to about my troubles was my Zen teacher Nishijima Roshi. This is probably not the proper way to, uh, to deal with your Zen teacher. I know it's weird for me when people come and, and tell me about their work troubles or their relationship troubles and things and I'm kind of like I feel a little inadequate sometimes to answer them but uh, but I'll always try and Nishijima Roshi was actually a good resource for problems regarding my working in Japan because he was a guy who wasn't just a Zen teacher, he wasn't just a full-time Zen teacher, he worked for a major uh, soap and cosmetics corporation in Japan. He, he worked there uh, long after retirement age and he was still working there when I was a student of his. So sometimes I would talk to him about my working troubles. And one of the problems that was going on at the time, I worked for the International Division of Tsuburai Productions, whose was we were basically trying to sell Ultraman in countries other than Japan, outside of Japan, basically anywhere in the world. When I first got hired, the president of the company was a man named Noboru Tsuburaya, who was the son of the founder of the company, the son of Eiji Tsuburaya, who had founded the company. And Noboru Tsuburaya had a very clear vision for what he wanted to do internationally with Ultraman. He had goals. He had uh, goals even if he didn't quite have plans, but he was working towards something specific. And basically, in case you care, uh, he wanted to make Ultraman popular in America. That was his biggest dream dream uh, for what we were doing internationally. He was, he, he was f happy to sell it to other countries and things, but he really wanted Ultraman to be a big hit in America. That was his goal. Then uh, he died. So about a year after I joined the company, Noboru Tsuburaya died. He got sick maybe th four to six months after I started working there, and nobody really knew how it was going, but it went badly for him. And about a year, maybe even a little bit less than a year after I joined the company, Noboru died. After Noboru died, the what we were doing with the international division sort of fell into disarray because uh, there were a lot of other issues going on with the company and the new president, who was Noboru's son, uh, Kazuo, didn't really have a clear vision for what to do with the international division, what to do with the company internationally, what he wanted to do with our programs internationally. 
So this created an issue which I could see clearly is that we were kind of floundering in the international division. We didn't know what the hell we were doing. And I went to Noboru, or sorry, I went to Gudo Nishijima. I didn't go to Noboru because he was dead by then. I went to Gudo Nishijima Roshi, my, my Zen teacher, and I was telling him about this uh, issue. And I said, well, I think the big problem with the office I'm working in is we have no goal. And then I stopped myself and I said, well, I know that in Zen we're not supposed to have goals. And Nishima Roshi jumped right in. He didn't usually do this. He would usually kind of let me, you know, talk and talk and talk before he said anything. But as soon as I said that, he jumped right in. And he said, no, you, when you are in business, you need to have a goal. And I found that interesting. And as the years have gone on, that idea has become atarimaya to me. Atarimaya is a nice Japanese phrase which means something like it just goes without saying and I kind of forget that there was a time in my life when that wasn't a tarimai. so the point Nishijima Roshi was telling me is that in Zazen Zazen is a goalless practice and this is an important aspect of Zazen practice is that it is goalless it is a practice without a goal that does not mean that the life for a Zen person, for a person who's practicing and studying Zen, should be a goalless life, should be a life without any goals. It does not mean that goals are a bad thing. It means that during Zazen, you have no goals. So just in short, because I want to talk about the other half of this equation. As far as Zazen is concerned, the reason we say it is a goalless practice is because when we are practicing Zazen, we are not trying to change anything. We are trying to sit still in the midst of reality just as it is. And this is an important distinction between Zazen and a lot of meditation practices because a lot of meditation practices are very goal oriented. There is an idea of what you want to achieve through your meditation. For example, you might want to achieve God consciousness. Now, that's a big goal in Hindu meditation. Or in certain kinds of Zen meditation, you want to achieve Satori or Kensho, which is an enlightenment experience. So your, your Zen practice in that kind of Zazen is guided or directed towards this goal of having a special experience called Satori or Kensho, an enlightenment experience, which, you know, is, you know, that's what you're trying to do. In Zen, as taught within the lineage of Dogen, who is the guy who founded the kind of Zazen that I do, it's a long story because there were other people who preceded him, but Dogen founded it for the most part. Uh, he's understood to be the sort of central figure in, in doing this, at least as far as the Japanese branch of this kind of practice goes. Uh, in Dogen's style of Zen, there is no goal. So you're not trying to achieve enlightenment. You're not trying to achieve God consciousness. You're not even trying to change the state you have into a different state. So if your mind is all scrambled up and there's a lot of noise going on in your head, you're not trying to make that stop or achieve a state of pure, unadulterated nothingness or, you know, who knows what people put in their, their heads as goals. But you're not trying to do that. So you're, you're sitting goallessly with no goal, with no aim in mind, nothing, nothing to achieve. But you are, are just sitting in the, the midst of reality as it is. Now, of course, you're doing a specific practice within that reality as it is, which is you're, you're sitting straight up with your back, you know, straight your spine aligned up and down and your chin tucked in and your hands in this weird mudra and your legs crossed and so forth. But within that, within the midst of what you're doing, you're not trying to change anything. Now, on the other hand, uh, this doesn't this doesn't mean that your life has to be goal free because your your life you have to have 
goals in life. Like I just mentioned in Subaraya Productions, in order for the international division to function properly and to do really anything except just sort of flounder around and repeat the same things we've done in the past, we had to have a goal. Uh, I am also uh, recently, uh, there's a some people I know who are having uh, specific problems dealing with a certain family member. I'm not going to go into all the details of this, but the what I've been watching happening with them is that they don't know what they're trying to get that family member to do. Uh, and it's very important that they understand what they're trying to get that family member to do because Otherwise, it just comes off like they're harassing the poor guy, you know, for, because they don't, they're not. They're just saying they don't like what he's doing now, but they're not telling him what they want him specifically to do. It, there's a lot of places in which, in life, situations that you, you get into in life where having a goal is important. I'm going on tour of Europe in, in a few weeks. As I just said, I'm, I'm canceling one of my events, but the rest of them are still going and they'll be up at the end screen. How's that for a plug? I'll put those. Well, no, I'll put them up right now just, just for poops and laughs. Uh, here's, here's where I'm going. Now, if I didn't have any goals, I couldn't do this. I couldn't. I couldn't. Uh, I couldn't travel through Europe if I didn't have a, a goal for what I'm doing. I'm doing an event which I just told you about, uh, which is somewhat unusual for me. It's a four-hour event in that place, Yoga on the Edge near Manchester. And now that I've agreed to do that, which was not the original plan, I'm going to have to come up with a goal, with something that I want to achieve within those four hours, or else I'm just going to waste everybody's time. I don't want people to come to that event at Yoga on the Edge on August 19th near Manchester, England. There's another plug for you. Uh, and, And feel like they've wasted their time because I've just been kind of like, well, let's just sit here and vibe, you know, or sit here in the midst of reality. That is one of the things we're going to do on August the 19th. It's one of the things we're going to do at every one of the events that I'm doing in Europe this year. But the event itself has to have some kind of, of a goal, even if that goal is not really all that specific you know, like we want to you know, have this exact thing happen, but you have to have something, you have to have something. And the reason I say this, and the reason I'm wasting so much of your valuable time saying this, is because I run into a lot of people uh, who have been practicing, who think like I did when I had that conversation with Nishijima Roshi, that when we're told that zazen is a goalless practice that this means by extension that our life should just be goalless and we should have no aim in life or or anything like that and that's that's not the way it is you you have to have aims you have to have goals you have to have things you want to achieve that, that you're not going to get through human life without having any of that on the other hand just a kind of caveat Doing the goalless practice of Zazen has changed my relationship to the other goals I have in life. Which means that even if I have a goal that I'm setting out to achieve, I am able to be content with not achieving exactly what I wanted. As a writer, this has been actually pretty good for me because I know a lot of people who are writers who will set themselves a a kind of goal for what they want to write and often they don't end up finishing anything. I've met so many writers who just write and write and write and write and rewrite and rewrite and edit and edit and edit and they never finish anything. Because it's never, whatever they write is never exactly what they intended. And in my case, I am aware of that because I think a lot of it being due to my Zen practice, that whatever I set out to do, whatever book I set out to write, the book that I actually end up writing will be at best 
a vague approximation of that. Uh, sometimes it's actually better than what I set out. The, the good example in my case, uh, for those of you who care, is my latest book, The Other Side of Nothing. What I set out to do was write a book about the Buddhist precepts and the importance of the Buddhist precepts. And what I ended up writing was, I think, probably the best book I've, I've written, uh, which is it does contain the stuff about the Buddhist precepts, but because of because of what I noticed while writing about the Buddhist precepts, it became a much better book. I realized while writing about the precepts, I had to address what are the reasons for the precepts and what's behind the precepts. And I realized that what was behind the precepts was this idea of, of non-duality, that the way that the Buddhists approach precepts, the way the Zen stream of Buddhism approaches the precepts, is from the standpoint of non-duality, in which the precepts are usually how you treat other people. But if you understand that there are no other people, <laughs> uh, then it really changes how you're going to approach ethics. And that's what I wrote about. And I think it became a much better book because it didn't achieve my goal. And if I had tried to achieve the goal I originally set out for, it wouldn't have been as good. So this is this is kind of how goals work. You, you, you have to have some kind of goal in life. But again, as far as Zen practice, when you're in the midst of Zen practice, when you're doing your Zen practice, you're trying to be, well, trying is kind of having a goal. But anyway, you're trying to have the goal of having no goal. As my, my first teacher Tim said, uh, the goal of having no goal is very different from any other goal that you could possibly have. And so that's the goal is to have no goal, uh, to, to just actually exist in the midst of this without trying to make this anything other than exactly what it is. And thereby you achieve, you, you actually do achieve something. And everybody who does zazen has a goal for it. Everybody who practices, nobody, nobody's going to waste their time looking at walls day after day after day uh, without having anything at all they want to achieve. Still, when you're in the midst of the practice, when you're in the moment by moment doing of the thing, you forget all the goals. That's at least you might still think of the goals, but you're you're no longer comparing this state you have at the at the moment to the ideal that you want to achieve that's the important thing so that's the thing about goals and i hope that uh, helped you achieve your goal of watching this video i don't know anyway if you want to help me achieve my goal of being able to feed myself and my uh, wife and my dog uh, you can go to the URL that you're seeing on the screen below, which is hardcorezen.info slash donate. That is hardcorezen.info slash donate. I make most of my money, my living from your donations, uh, not from any other source, certainly not from book royalties or speaking fees. Uh, and so it's very important. But as always, you don't got to donate if you don't want to donate. So we will see you next time. Have a good time all the time. Bye. Hey, FICO, what are your goals? FICO is staying here with us this week because his, uh, his doggy mama and doggy daddy are on, away on a vacation. So this is FICO who's staying with us and here's Ziggy, the star of every video. And their goal today I think is to rest and not deal with the heat outside. See you later guys. <laughs>